Welcome back to Sonoma Raceway and the Cycle Gear Championship of Sonoma as our coverage continues here in our pre-race show. Now look, one of the things we like to do is take the helmet off of racers and introduce you to them. So in this Sunoco profile, we'd like to introduce you to number 96, Jason Aguilar. Well, I was 10 years old, first time I ever got on a motorcycle. I took a lesson on a pocket bike with a group called SC Mini GP. And, you know, I, it was just a lesson. I wasn't supposed to go out and race or anything, but I just kind of rode up and down the pits. They showed me the basics. And they were like, you know, looks like you're doing okay enough. If you want, you can try to go race. So I just kind of progressed each year to a bigger bike. And once we got to the 600s and started doing pretty well, I was like, you know, let's try pro racing, maybe we could actually make something out of it. I just went into that last round last year with kind of a confidence I've never even had before myself. I was just like, I can do this, I know I got it, let's go out and do it. And, and I think we led pretty much like every session, qualified on pole, won both races, and won the championship. I don't really have too many expectations for this weekend, we just gotta kind of see what, what's gonna happen. I'd be really happy with two top fives, um, we just gotta see what happens, so you never know. So Jason Aguilar qualified ninth in this one, trying to put it on the podium for his ridiculous racing team. We'll see what he has on the other side of this. Our coverage continues from Sonoma Raceway. Welcome back to the Cycle Gear Championship of Sonoma here at Sonoma Raceway. Sonoma, California is where we're hanging out for this round number seven before the Super Sport Race. Now this track is absolutely fantastic. 1968 it was built. You heard Hannah talk about it. Jason, take us for a lap around this track. Well, you can see the start finish line there right, right before turn one, Greg, up a big steep hill into turn two. Very inside of that turn gets really, really steep. You can use that a lot to help slow the motorcycle down. Up over turn two, off camber, down into turn three, three A. Again, off camber as you head down towards turn four. Heavy braking area down. Two quick up shifts into turn five, and then you do one quick back shift as you go into turn six. Up over the top, a lot of different lines. You really want to get your bike set up for the carousel because you're, you're leaned over for such a long time through that corner. Down to turn seven, a lot of heavy braking. We're going to see a lot of passes for position down there. Into the S's. S's are another key ingredient to getting around this track fast. If your bike works bad through there, it makes your lap times awful long. Down into turn nine and nine A, a chicane that they built here a number of years ago to slow us down into turn 10. Turn 10, uh, out of turn nine A, you're gonna do two quick up shifts through turn 10, one or two back shifts into turn 11. Turn 11's great, Greg, because it's a slow, slow corner, but then you gotta get a good drive out of there and that dash to the line. This really the last spot that you have to try to pass anybody and you can see a lot of different kinds of maneuvers bumpy down there we've already seen a couple little incidents down there throughout the weekend but uh but what it does it leads to a lot of excitement at the end of a lap great great corner yeah we've seen a lot of drama in there speaking about drama we had some in qualifying let's take a look at the top three and how super sport qualified jason jd beach at a 138.007 to qualify third a lot of people thought he would come here and just put it on pole yeah well i think that the times from last year kind of uh, show that these guys would be in the 37s again. Uh, JD yesterday, as is normal, he always goes out last in practices, I've noticed, uh, throughout the course of the season and was immediately fast all the time. So the fact that he goes 38 flat to, uh, to be third on the grid, uh, he'll be on that front row starting right next to a good friend of his, Hayden Gillum, at 37, 5, 4, 6. Hayden did this lap time very late in our session this morning and looked super comfortable doing it. But the guy on pole who did it, Following, actually, just getting a, maybe a little a visual toe with a 37.515. Valentine DeBees, very, very fast in certain sections of this course. Obviously, all these three guys are fast in certain parts of the golf course. Our golf course, of, <laughs> of the course. See where my brain is. Yeah. Um, but all these guys here, uh, in the J JD, just a little tick off of the 37s, but he'll be there. Uh, I think these three guys will probably get into the 37s in the race very, very early. It's going to be a dogfight because what happens at this track is a lot of passing here is very difficult, Greg. So what it does is it blends itself to allow a lot of other guys back into the race because when when you make a block pass on people, it can kind of slow up the whole queue and it's gonna allow other people that might not be right there. So you look at the second row of like Prince of Ort and Escalante, 
who of them are going to step up. Yeah, that's the big question. All right, we'll take commercial break. On the other side, we'll get this super sport race underway. Hang tight. Moto America is presented by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires, built here for the way you ride here. And powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. All right, so we still have some time before we get this Cycle Gear Championship of Sonoma race number one for Super Sport underway as the riders just made their way around this sighting lap. So let's get a look at JP's keys to the race. Jason, in Super Sport, what do you think? Well, I thought it was great this morning to see this guy here, Valentine DeBees, get a very late pull. It was, it was, he was kind of had uh, Hayden up in his gun sights there, and he was able to just barely pip. Uh, Hayden there, uh, probably with like two minutes to go. They didn't even get another lap. That's how close it was to the end. But uh, DeBees impresses me. I, I, I've said it all year. I love watching him uh, get out first in the practice sessions as well. Uh, Hayden Gillum, I think this is going to be an important place for him start-wise. He's shown uh, that he's got yeah. the pace, and we've talked a lot about his starts. This one here is not such a long run to turn one, so I feel like if he can get that good, solid launch, uh, the chances are of him coming through turn two and being in that first couple, uh, first two or three spots out of turn two will be key for him here. And really, Greg, who steps up? We've seen that piece that we did just here at the start of our show of who are the young guys kind of coming behind. This weekend, I feel like, you know, you look at Richie Escalante here on your screen, Braden Ort, Bryce Prince, uh, Nick McFadden. We've been dying to see Nick on the podium. We've seen Corey West on the podium. Uh, Jason Aguilar, top ten, you know, he's qualified ninth here. There's some guys that are really hungry to, to get their names up there, uh, and, and I just kind of wonder who's that going to be. All right, that is the question. Who is it going to be? Want to tell us, tell you to make sure you check us out on all of our social media. Of course, it's all at Be In Motor on Twitter, on the Facebook, on the Instagram, and make sure that you follow us and get information about Moto America and other stuff going on. We will take a break. When we come back, we're getting closer to the race start. All right, oh, by the way, if you're on Twitter, go to at Motor and really give us your comments about what you're seeing. Hashtag be in Moto America. And if you're watching us, go ahead and hashtag that and share your experience, and we might post that up later on in the show. Go to Twitter, at BN Motor, and do that thing you see on the screen. We'll take another break. On the other side, Hannah's going to talk to some of these racers, and we'll get the race going. We're back at Sonoma Raceway, waiting the start of the Super Sport race, which means that on the racetrack, riders are on the grid, and so is Hannah. Thanks, guys. I'm down here with the number 18 of Nick McFadden. Nick, we've seen you in some serious podium battles the last couple of rounds. What are your expectations going into today's race? Uh, the same as it has been all year. I want to be up on the box. Uh, we've had a good group at every race this year. There's three or four of us that have had a big battle, and... Uh, this is our worst qualifying of the year. It's been a tough weekend, but uh, we got a good setup for the race, and we're going to push to stay with these guys early and see what happens at the end. All right, Nick. Thank you so much. Best of luck. All right. To say Nick's desperate in, in the top seven, by the way, in points, Nick McFadden is fourth and the only rider in the top seven who has not scored a podium yet this season. He's been consistent, only one point out of third in the championship, but he just is dying to stand on top of that podium. He good deserves look. it. Yeah. Good look at Caroline Olsen. On the 43, she qualified in the 18th spot. As the grid is clearing, Hannah's still down there. Go, Hannah. I've got Braden Or Braden, we've seen you on a couple of podiums so far this season. You know, how are you feeling your confidence-wise going into this afternoon's race? Uh, like you said, I've been on the podium a few times, and uh, last year was my first win. Took pole here. Obviously, we didn't take pole this year, but uh, my confidence is... It's pretty high, I've got to say. I'm hoping that I can take my first win again this year. So uh, we got to see how the race plays out, but I really think we can be there up front. All right, thanks, Braden. I love the confidence. He's I love the kid. Yeah, <laughs> I just second think he's and such third a good place. dude. And last time we saw him, he was on the podium. He got third at Utah. 
to, uh, he was standing on the podium with J.D. Beach in that one and Valentin DeBees. He's a hard charger. Like, if you if you met Braden Norton in the pit, you'd never think that he's a motorcycle racer. I, I don't think. And then he gets out there and he's fierce, and I love that about him. Valentine DeBees on pole here for our race. Hayden Gillum, J.D. Beach, as we showed a little bit earlier. Richie Escalante uh, sitting there in row two. Braden Norton, who we just got to speak with, and Bryce Prince round out row two. Good run from Bryce. Corey West. Still sorting out that new R6, but doing a good job with his TC racing team. Nick McFadden had an accident this morning, so seeing him there in the middle of the third row is good. Jason Aguilar. Then we got Maziato, who also had an accident this morning, I believe, in turn one. Greg Michael Gilbert, yeah. Ashton Yates, rounding out row four. Then we got row five, Miles Thornton, Wyatt, Wyatt Ferris, Lucas Silva, row six. We got Daytona Anderson, JC Camacho, and Caroline Olson. Going into row seven, we got uh, Edgar Zaragoza. Fernando Silva, and Nolan Lampkin, and then we got Robert Pierce, Andrew Artola, Luke Luciano in row eight. So, and, uh, and Jarrett Nassani back there in row nine. So, we got nine rows of guys, and uh, girls. you know, guys and, and, girls. and girls. Yep, yep, guys and girls. Sorry, a girl, I guess we should say. And girl, yeah. Um, but I think this guy here, the the thing about Valentin, he does a few things a bit different. Uh, you're going to see him go up this hill. This is all up through turn one here. Uh, they, they get this uh, run up, but when he goes to turn two, a lot of guys, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of the riders go back to second gear for turn two. Uh, I was watching Valentine come out of here the yes yesterday, and he kind of runs around there in third and tries to carry a bunch of roll and corner speed. He just does things a little bit different, and uh, there are places where we go where he's got that bike geared very short, as is kind of normal for the Suzuki they, to, get, to try to get them off the corners. The thing I like about Valentin is he's willing to try a lot of different things with his crew, and, and they try to do everything they can to get that Suzuki competitive. So I think here it's going to be interesting for me to watch how he's able to make what he is doing here work for him, whether he's ahead or behind. I think a, I think a start is going to be really key here for him. Very unique for Valentin to be the M4 X-Star Suzuki rider is the fact that he is a tester for MotoGP tires. So he actually gets to test sometimes with some MotoGP test riders like Mika Calio and, and riders like that. Most of the time uh, doing that on a, on a full-blown superbike. So they don't get to do it on a GP bike, but a superbike. And in addition to that, because he does his duties with the tire manufacturer for MotoGP, he actually gets to ride, somebody off in the dirt there, but yeah. he gets to ride quite a bit. Was that, that's a... Uh, that looked like Daytona, or was it's it definitely been? one of the M4 bikes. I, I don't think it was Nick. No, I don't think it was Nick. I don't think it was Nick. It looked like it might have been Daytona Anderson, possibly there, who did that. So, yeah, I'm not sure it was because he was just running straight off into the mix there. Anyways. Anyway, so what I was saying was Valentin has a unique position where when he's home in France, he has a, a variety of, of like 600s, thousands, and he does a lot of tire tests. So he actually gets to ride on a track more than anyone in this series. And I at least twice as much. I think that's why he gets up to speed so quickly too, and I think it's also an advantage. If you're riding a thousand all the time, can you imagine, you know, if he, if he's testing tires, riding thousands, getting up to speed on those, coming back and jumping on a 600, especially as, as good of a well-prepared bike as that team has underneath him, it probably feels like a toy to him getting back on that yeah. thing and going. Yeah, helps you to get way ahead of the motorcycle when you're at speed. So fans out here in the breeze, beautiful Northern California day as the grid now sets as we have a Suzuki on pole position and a couple of Yamahas right next to him as these three have been the absolute top end, the sharp end of the field. Can anyone step up today? First can, 20 seconds are key for Gillum. Can Bray North get a win? All right, here we go, race underway. Great start Super for Gillum. Super short race one. Great start for Hayden as he got a start. He's off with those first two guys, which is exactly what he needed to do. He needed to jump out with them and he's done that. It looks like he's trying to scoot around the outside. Now, this is where I was talking about Valentin. He's going to be in third gear coming out of there, as he has been. And it'll just be interesting to see. And I could be wrong on that, but, you know, I, just from listening and experience of being out there, uh, it'll be interesting to see how he handles that. You can see Gillum getting very aggressive early, trying to go up underneath Valentin. Valentin's going to sneak back up underneath him. Don't, don't want to let JD get a wee, but, but Gillum is, hey, this is the best start we've seen of him all year, being right there with those guys. He's made his job a lot easier. Very hungry Bryce Prince in fourth place right now. Talked to Bryce just before we got, before I came up in the booth, Greg, when I was down there grabbing us some lunch, and he was talking about how fast he, and good he feels through the fast segments. Those fast segments are about to come up now. Gillum has moved himself 
into second around he, the beast. He, he did that midway through the carousel. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, great move. Sorry. Yeah, and, and and you can see now Bryce is right where he wants to be through this section of track, going after these guys. So JD Beach, second into turn number one, made an aggressive move. This is what JD likes to do. He likes to lead the way. He likes to have his race set for him with nobody in front of him so he can control the pace, pick the lines he wants. And so his plan is in motion and it's working for him right now, but off of a really good start, Hayden Gillum trying to be very aggressive and not let JD get away, but this is what JD's a master at. If he's got things working for him, he likes to put his head down and try to put some gap, at least on the rest of the field, and then settle in mid-race. Yeah, and it's gonna be interesting to see how these guys go about trying to stay with J.D. Eric. J.D. loves to lead, doesn't he? I mean, we've seen him just lo loves yeah. to lead from the start and, and, and lead laps. He doesn't want to have anybody get in front of him, kind of like his old teammate Josh Hayes. You know, Josh was kind of the same way. He always wanted to lead. If somebody passed it, he attacked him right back. But now you can see uh, he's just starting to pull away. He gained half a second in the first segment. Unbelievable. And, yeah, and this is, J.D. had been putting in some laps over the course of the weekend. He just grinds out the laps, and it pays dividends for him. Especially, you know, with full fuel loads and, and so on. Yeah, really hard working off the racetrack as well. J.D. Beach, one of the names in the hat for the retiring Roger Hayden's ride at Yoshimura Suzuki. There's two riders in this field who are on a short list. J.D. Beach is one of them. So is Valentin DeBees. What do the future hold for them? Valentin, of course, on a one-year contract. He's always done a one-year contract, Jay. Never had the desire to do two-year contract or extended contract for Valentin to bees because he likes to put the risk onto himself. He said, I'm never worried about slowing down because if I slow down at all, it's my fault. Yep, and I'm really impressed right now with this guy right here. Good to see our cameras going. Bryce Prince this weekend picked up sponsorship from Let's Ride Track Days, Southern California-based group here, and uh, they've, they've allowed to help keep his season going, uh, and, and Bryce is doing the, doing the business right now, staying with these three guys up in the front. And, and breaking away from that little battle back behind him for fifth. So tremendous job so far for Bryce. Uh, obviously he got drafted in there with Trav uh, with Kyle. Oh, and he's off. I gave him the announcer curse, Greg. He's off in turn one. Ah, uh, that's too yep, bad. Yeah, he just overcooked it. I watched him go past our post. He's okay, he just ran off the track. But you can see he's disappeared back there. And uh, that just, <laughs> just, I gave him the announcer's curse. Yeah, a little I mean, bit, I'm, but. I'm pumping him up. Yeah, but Bryce Prince out of Bakersfield, California, wanting to put on a big show for the home crowd and he is off in this one so he he's took okay himself, he's uh, yeah, back took on himself the out of contention for a podium at least for the moment because these three are very difficult to reel back in it's like you got to stay with them there's no you know chipping no. away at these guys lead so no, you're not going to do that with these with these uh three bryce still got himself in fourth place but it was good that he had a little bit of a gap there behind him and yeah uh, Bray north nick mcfadden Corey west back there Maziato, richie escalante jason aguilar gilbert in 11th ashton yates in 12th Miles Thornton, J.C. Camacho, and Wyatt Ferris last time they came across the line. So just looking at these three guys now. Now kind of all of them are just, they're just spaced out enough, and we're going to be looking at our split time. That's the big thing key for me is we'll be able to tell which one of these guys are fast in the spots that they need to be and not. And uh, You can see Braden Norton, now Bryce there, and there's Nick McFadden running sixth. Just behind Nick, a little further back is Corey West. And then a big gaggle of guys, including Escalante and Maziato and Aguilar and them guys behind there. So Bryce has got himself going again. Hopefully he can put the fight to Braden, get back up. These guys know each other well. It's a bike that, you know, Bryce rode for in the past. He's ridden for tune racing, so he knows he knows what kind of bike Braden's under, got underneath him right now. Last time by, J.D. Beach had set the fastest lap of the race. Then it was Hayden Gillum just this time by and Valentin to bees. So 137.441. On lap number three for Valentin to be so far the fastest lap of the race. So the tires really starting to come in. Fuel load, like you're saying, Jason, starting to lighten up. And Hayden Gillum and Valentin to be is not letting JD Beach get away at all. Hayden had actually put in a really big charge to close the gap, and it was three tenths of a second down from half a second, but it looks like JD head down again. JD's so good in the first sector. And you can see he's about mid-track on his entry there. Gillum pulled up quite a bit through five and six, and now he's right on the back. Look how good. Look at the, the R6s, Greg. The R6s look like they work a little bit better going through the carousel than Valentin's bike there. They both pull away quite a bit from DeBees, and that's crucial because if DeBees can't get out of the carousel or through the carousel with him, 
It really eliminates one of his best passing opportunities as they get down into turn seven. But both these R6s look tremendously good on the edge of the tire down through the carousel. Does that change the fuel load goes down? Uh, and, and so on for Valentin, we'll have to wait and see. So JD Beach, number 95, leading the way on that Monster Energy Yamaha Extended Services Graves Yamaha. Right behind him, ridiculous racing, Hayden Gillum. That is a similar prepared machine, as that is a bike that's provided by Graves. So it's, it's in theory, supposed to be the exact same spec on that ridiculous racing uh, R6. And then there's the M4 X-Star Suzuki GSX-R600 Valentin de Bees. As the Bees makes a big aggressive wow. move into turn number one, I like that one. That is such a oh. big move. But look at it, just Underneath. allowed Hayden to go right back by. Now this is the where they got to be a little bit careful because this is also the spot where JD Beach is tremendous up through this top half, uh, top first part of the racetrack. He's so fast up through this little section, and uh, they don't want to let him get too far away. Uh, JD did the fastest last split of the race on that lap through, so we'll have to just kind of. See how things go here. Now this is where I'm curious to see. DeBees is really good through five. And now we're gonna see how his bike is as they come up over the top of the hill into six. Look at the lines, just doesn't, like, just as he crests the hill, yep. he gets the bike settled. It looks like he loses a couple bike lanes just in that moment. And you can see it. what it does then is it makes it hard for him to kind of catch back up. And you know, it, it's, I don't know if it's a case where, where Valentin needs to have kind of clear track in front of him to run where he wants to run or and that could be go back to the gearing thing that we spoke about or I spoke about earlier. So we just have to wait and see how that plans out. Yeah, because he wants to be able to have his own line carry the roll speed. It's that old 250 versus a superbike scenario where maybe the gearing of these R6s is just taking him off the corner and he needs more roll speed, so he's trying to control it. That, I think, was why the attack in turn number one on Hayden Gillum, that particular first split, second split, if Ballantin to Bees maybe has his own choice of lines, he might be able to reel in J.D. Beach. That's right. And, and that's what we've got to try to pay attention to. We still have 14 laps Oof. left when they come by this time. Those are just some bumps that you're going to see all these guys kind of running over and hitting down there. That's not that big a deal, but I know what you're saying. Now, this is where this is where JD seems so good. And this time, Gillum's going to get a, a clear shot at him through this first sector. And we're going to see how Valentine just opens up that entry and, and, and the R6s can stay a little bit tighter on the, on the exit even. He just opens that up and he lets go of the lever a little bit sooner to carry that roll speed through in third. But it doesn't look like it allows him to really get off there the way, he, the way I would think that he would want to. So J.D. Beach, last time by a 37.9, 38 flat, and 38.2 for Gillum and DeBee. So nothing really in between it on this one, that seesaw battle. Ray Norton still holding on the fourth price, Prince in fifth spot, Nick McFadden in sixth, then you go back to West, Escalante, Aguilar, wow. and Gilbert. Wow, Hayden's really good through the carousel, really good. You can see him, he drove it up kind of underneath JD a little bit, and then it kind of cost him a little bit on the exit. So uh, JD very out of shape going into seven, but you see he's kind of tight, and, and you really can double apex that corner. You can let it get out to that yellow line. Yesterday I was out there with J uh, Jake Zemke, and we were looking at some things, and uh, Jake got over to this particular section of the track, and, and was talking to me about what some of the stuff he was seeing, and he's spot on. Those guys are letting that bike run out to that yellow line, cutting over some of the curves coming down through that, that little spot. Now, both of these guys in the front have just started, just barely started to gap the bees there uh, in, in third. Hayden Gillum's looking really fast right now as the race wears on his beach. He's gonna go down to that apex, first gear turn. You can see he was in there a little bit toasty, but he's able to turn it, get on the gas, Indication from his pit board that second place is point zero behind him, or plus zero, I guess you could say. So that's telling JD that his friend Hayden Gillum is right on his tailpipe. Oh, and you, you see JD just get a little bit out of shape. Twice I've seen that now, just where the bike just gets a little out of shape on the exit. He has a tendency to, you know, both the Yamahas have a tendency to hold it a little bit tighter on the exit of the turns, and so. If they got just a little tiny bit too much leaning with a little bit too much throttle, that's what you'll start to see. Can't impress enough on everyone how tricky this road course is. <laughs> yeah. Up and down it goes. You throw in the bumps on this one and how the motorcycle gets upset and it G's out. It's just an absolutely incredible. Oh, look at Gillum. That's what I was saying. He did it the lap before, Greg. His bike is tremendous down there. Now, JD's going to be able to get right back in his draft and probably try to go right back past him. You can see they put a little bit of a gap. On, on Valentin. These guys will race each other really clean. 
Will he be able to turn it back underneath him? He's trying. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, but see, you can see JD gave him some room. You know, the thing is, is that if you don't give each other a little bit of room out there, you run the risk of both not only tipping over, but slowing the pace up. These guys both know that. They, they both know, and they both race around each other enough. Uh, but, but I tell you, that move that Hayden's got in the carousel is is a is a good one there. That he's able to put that bike wherever he wants. The ridiculous racing crew have done a great job with him and being able to get that bike working. And you need a bike that that is easy to ride around here. But see, just that little bit of those two guys messing with each other, it's allowed the bees to get right back on on the back of them. So Hayden Gillum threw a shot at JD Beach. Might have been a little bit too early, but that rehearsal. So at least Gillum knows. If he can get around him maybe a little bit earlier in the carousel or just before the carousel, he might have an opportunity to hold off J.D. Beach when he, J.D. gets slamming on those brake calipers as they head into turn number seven. So at the moment, we're in a very tricky section of the racetrack as we head down to turn number four. Yeah. Oh, you can see J.D. a little wide on that exit, has to pick up that front wheel. All right, so little, Hayden's a little closer heading into the carousel. And I'm not sure, Greg, but I see. Oh, look at there it. There he goes. There he goes, Greg. They're really bumpy in there. Really bumpy down in that little section. But he makes a pass again. Yeah, Greg, I was going to mention to you, Braden Nort was going down our timing no. screen. And from where I'm sitting right now, I can see where he's at. He's up. Uh, looks a little worse for wear. But you can see this battle at the front. Gillen was able to do the same thing in the carousel again. Took a big shot at him. Now he's got a little more roll speed Whoa, where he's he going to be able to move him. JD now. Let's see what happens. Yep, he's going to move him out of the way just a little bit. See, he was able to get back over that curbing. Now Gillum leading, trying to lead a lap here. This is where he's fast. Look how fast he is down through there, Greg. And yesterday I could hear him on the limiters. He started getting down to braking for this right left into here. And you're going to get a chance. This is where Braden North just tipped over where these guys just came through. So there were some yellow flags working earlier, but this is the replay of the pass for the lead. Now Gillum's going to actually stand the bike up just a little bit here to close it off to where JD had to back off the gas just a little. Yeah, had to do a little balancing act on the pegs as well. That's why his foot came off. So Hayden Gillum now will lead a lap in the record books. This is the section where JD Beach has been so, so strong, but JD's also had nothing to look at but clear racetrack. We're going to see now. This does Braden Nord. Yeah, like he may have a little... Uh, yeah, he, he high-sided, Greg. That's going to be a big high side out of turn 9A on their way to 10, where he ended up on the track and where the bike ended up on the track was quite a ways down, the, quite a ways apart from each other. Into turn number four, Hayden Gillum still leading. Now they're gonna come up the hill. This is where if Hayden really has the last time through as he made the pass, he didn't have his line choice. But now we'll see how fast he is through this carousel. Couple bike lengths entering. He gets it turned and gets on the gas. So. Not too not a, bad, not, but not as dominating as he had when he was following JD. Yeah, JD was pretty strong just towards the exit of that corner. Hayden's bike looks like it tips in and kind of carries a lot of early mid-corner speed. But but we'll see how that, you know, with, with JD, JD's going to be going to school and trying to figure out, all right, where's Hayden a little bit quicker? Hayden's extremely fast down through these S's, it's particularly between the left and the right there. He's really fast. Look at the gap he pulls on those guys. And we have another guy down, no, Anthony Maziato. That's going to be turn three, Greg, I, just from the looking on the screen. Yep, turn three. That's going to be a left-hander right before they go up the hill there, up over the top of the hill. So Airbags in the suit doing the job for Maziato and his yep. day and easy suit. And it looks like, nope, thought for a second that maybe J.D. Beach was feeling it under the brakes. Gets a turn nicely, gets back on the gas, but a couple bike lengths advantage for Gillum. Not quite as close as it was last time by. But he's, he's good where he needs to be good. That's the thing about Gillum right now that's impressive. If he can get himself through the carousel strong uh, and pull enough of a gap to, to tune J.D. Beach from getting up close to him, that's yet to be seen, by the way. Um, but he's pretty good through there. This is turn three. This is where we saw Maziato. And we haven't seen uh, Anthony you know, fling the bike down the road too much this year. So uh, to see him down in three and early this morning, I believe, in turn one, uh, pretty unusual. But that's the kind of track this place is. Very tricky place. So the top three we're looking at here, first, second, and third, there's Gillum on the 69, ridiculous racing. And of course you have JD Beach, number 95. He's on that Monster Energy. Look at that gap, Greg. Yeah. Look at that gap. And so what it does, sorry to interrupt you, what that does is it allows him to have the freedom to kind of take the line he wants down in here into turn seven and, and not worry too much about having somebody go back underneath him. And then he's incredibly strong as they come down through these S's. 
You're going to see him cut over the curbing here on his left, right over the top of that, inside the paint, back to this left. Now, this left, right, look at the gap he pulls on them. So what that does is it now allows a, the second passing spot here, they're not allowed to get close enough to him. Mm -hmm. And you can see, too, when they, when they really started to get out of turn number seven into that whole S section where it's heading off into turn number eight, JD's bike, a lot of movement on the rear end as he was trying to get the power to the ground. Yeah, no, you're and see how much tighter JD is into all the corners, and I'm not sure if he's just doing that kind of as a defense because he knows he's got plus zero on his board and, and knows that the bees is behind him, or if that's just a line that he chooses to take all, all together. But he closes up all the gap that he loses from, say, turn seven to turn nine. He closes all that gap back up. A little bit further back here, battle for fifth. This is Corey West. This is uh, Escalante and Nick McFadden. All battling for fifth. Just up the road from them is Bryce Prince, who did recover. He was behind Ort when Ort fell over, but Bryce Prince still on his way to a, to a fantastic finish here, running fourth. Just up the road from these guys, about, what is it, Greg? What is it, about a second? Three seconds. Yeah. He's two seconds. Sorry, two seconds up from these guys. So Corey West has got a couple podium finishes. Sits third in this championship on the season. So West has three third-place finishes to his credit. He was on the couch at the beginning of the season. Valentin de Bees having an incident in a non-Moto America race in Daytona was at home in France recovering and so the M4X star Suzuki team got him to race and of course the team he's on now. Mm, look at that, JD Beach. There he goes. He he not only entered tighter, he was able to hold it tighter all the way through that corner. So he's followed Gillum enough. He was able to get off the carousel just as well. And and these guys they just pull away from the bees a little bit in that section. So if these two guys work together a little bit for maybe two or three laps and don't duff each other up, I think that they'll be able to get away a little bit. And the thing with JD, he's a racer. Like, he loves racing. He loves race craft, race strategy. And so he's had all those laps to go to school on Hayden Gillum. Hayden, big mistake. Yep, that's a big mistake, and it's always the slow corners. We've said it year in, uh, all year long. And you can see he moved over to the left because he didn't know how close to Bees was, was behind him. He was trying to be defensive and not lose another position. And that is also going to allow JD to stretch it even more. Now, JD probably has, what has he got? Almost a 0.6 of a second as they head up that hill. No rear rear mirrors on these motorcycles, so JD doesn't know that. We're going to see shortly how strong Hayden is through that carousel because it's really seemed like the only place he's been able to make up any time on JD Beach is through that carousel. Could be it for JD. That mistake. That's a big mistake. I Turn mean, eleven. I'm telling you. But this is where Hayden's good. Now let, we're really going to be able to tell right now. Look at that first split. 22-6 to 22-8. He lost two tenths, but a lot of the la part that he lost was in the last split of that last lap. So we're going to be able to tell now if he's able to draw any of this, mm. any of this little bit that he's lost, if he can draw it back a little. And some lap traffic coming up. Now they do have flags that tell them, hey, the leaders are coming through. But sometimes especially with a racetrack here that has places that are one line, just a one line section. Like if you kind of lap her through here, sometimes you're going to get stuck, but nothing looks good, nice and clear for JD. A little bit made up by Hayden Gillum in that one. There we go, the battle between Corey West and Richie Escalante as they roll down into turn seven. And uh, these guys are both both pushing to try to bridge that gap up to, to Cor uh up to Bryce, it's kind of stayed the same right around two seconds Bryce has over these two guys right now. Yeah. And you can see Corey just not using a lot of exit there. He's probably playing a little defensive role as well, not wanting Escalante or give Escalante the nod of even thinking about running down the inside. Just behind them, Nick McFadden, and I can see Jason Aguilar out my window, only probably a couple seconds or so behind Nick as well. You can see Corey's really defensive in all the corners that are important to to. to to, to, to be careful of. And here you come, Escalante comes down. Oh, wow. That was a big sideways moment for Escalante. Sure was. That's not where you want to do it. It gives Corey West a little wave. So, and, Richie uh, Escalante out of Mexico on that Quicksilver Lexan Hudson motorcycles machine, able to save it and continue on down the road as Corey West trying to get the power to the ground on his TSE Yamaha. On number 36 is West and number 50 for Escalante. Beautiful motorcycle in real life. Oh by my the way. god, yeah, they've done a great job with that bike. It looks good. The guys at the front still uh, I've seen purple now. That's the only thing that drew my attention on my board here. But yeah, these two guys are still going at it pretty hard. Where well, Richie Escalante just got that bike sideways is so sketch going through turn five. And you can see how much he tried to open up the carousel there. And really you can open it up as much as you like. 
uh, it's already a really, really long corner. He's carrying some speed down through there, but when you got somebody in front of you, it's pretty hard to take advantage of that. And right now, you can see Corey's pretty defensive into seven, into nine, into 11. He knows how not to get past, and that's really what's going on because Escalante, before his big sideways move, was running in front of him. So West New knows where Escalante is strong as part of the defensive lines you're seeing out of Corey West right now in the 36 machine. This is the battle for fifth spot you're looking at as we have six laps to go. J.D. Beach came across the stripe, by the way, extending his lead to 1.2 seconds over Hayden Gillum and the Bees with another four-tenths of a second behind Gillum. How about 37-7 for J.D. on that lap? And, oh. and see, this is what happens when, if you're Richie, it gets really frustrating because you think, okay, well, he's blocking all the insides of places, so it's going to take like a big pass or a big move somewhere for me to try to go underneath him or go past him. He's all over the back of Corey right now. What, what, what Richie, in my, my opinion, needs to do is just Back off a little bit in one of these corners, mid-corner, so that when you can start rolling up on him to get close enough to him to a breaking spot, you'll be able to actually still be able to go underneath him. If you go off the corner and you drive up behind somebody mid-corner and you have to wait for them to get on the throttle before you do, it'll make your race really frustrating. So about five and a half laps to go as we continue to watch this battle for fifth spot rage on as Bryce Prince is caught in the middle between a J.D. Beach, Hayden Gillum, Valentin DeBee's battle, and then Bryce hanging out in fourth, about three and a half seconds ahead of these two riders. And you can see just off in the back, Nick McFadden trying desperately to close the gap. Yeah, that right now I think J.D.'s also been able to make, you know, ha there's been a couple back markers that have just been able to make up the difference because DeBee's is going, he's going with Gillum. But JD's just right masterful as we get a look back at our leader here. He's not only is JD able to close off his entries a little bit, but he's able to still keep up his speed and still be able to do the lap times. He's got a couple of back markers about two seconds in front of him this this starting this lap that he'll be able to reach. And DeBees has gone by Gillum now, so that must have happened down in the turn eleven also. We saw Gillum make a mistake there a couple of laps ago. Not sure if that happened again this time, but DeBees is able to go past him. One thing we know about Gillum is he really has to override that motorcycle occasionally to keep the pace. Yep. And and a lot of that really just has to do with the fact of his size. You know, JD and, and, and Valentin smaller in stature. I mean, Hayden, just a taller rider, just carries more meat on his bones, giving away a little bit on these 600cc machines. Yeah. Sometimes at a place like this, being a, big, a bit bigger rider doesn't hurt you too much. Um, it, 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 it can actually be a, a benefit because you can muscle the bike around a little bit from left to right and so on. And uh, so sometimes it could be a bit of an advantage, but it can also tire you out. Look at, look at the back markers, just kind of getting out of the way. Good job by both those guys. They got a race amongst each other, and they still were able to kind of get out of the way of those guys nicely there. Yeah, and, and part of the rules here in Moto America is if you are getting lapped, that you can't, as a back marker, take advantage of someone else you're racing against That's either. That's great. Which, which is good, which is something that they didn't have in years past. Yep, and our race direction here at Moto America are good at like just seeing that kind of stuff too. And they go back and look at video and they take the corner workers, what the corner workers say they see, but you know, it's good that our riders uh, pay attention to that stuff. J.D. Beach with another couple tenths of a second last lap by. So now M4 X-Star Suzuki rider, Valentin DeBees, two seconds in drift of J.D. J.D. Beach trying to notch another win in this season, Jason. Nah, and, you know, at this point, he's got such a big lead in the championship that he can just kind of ride free, do what he wants to do. What's the lead at, Greg? It's uh, 82 points. 82 points. Yeah. So when you've got over a three-race lead, you know, hey, if, even if I go throw it down the road, I've, got, I've still got two races or whatever to, to, to make this up. But those guys are making no impression. This guy at the front right now on cruise control did a good job managing things at the beginning. Of course, it's easy for me to say he's on cruise control. He's yeah, right. He's doing 38-2. <laughs> he's still operating within the same second of his fastest lap and, uh, and and pulling away. You can see the Dunlop tire selection, the extra soft front and rear tires for him. Dunlop comes with a variety of tires that riders can choose from, but everyone has the exact same tires available to them in each of the classes we have here in Moto America as J.D. Beach working on a four-race win streak. And so far this season, Jason, in nine races, J.D. Beach has finished them all, and he hasn't finished below second spot. So he's got those seven victories and two second-place finishes where the story for Valentin DeBees, of course, has been completely different as he had to miss 
the first two rounds, first four races. He came back with a win, two second place finishes, and he had that DNS that did not start yep. for Valentin de Bees, which was just a real classy move, you know, from our perspective yeah, at Utah. Utah. Yeah, for sure. And like, then got back on yep. the bike and finished second. Oh, he got out of shape a little bit there in turn 10. He's still pushing, obviously, is de Bees. He knows he's got company still behind him. But, uh, but yeah, no, you're exactly right, Greg. And it's just too bad that he got hurt at the beginning of the year. And you can see Escalante now has made his way around Corey West. He's doing his best to try to close that gap up to Bryce Prince, who's in fourth still. And when Richie Escalante is on it, you can just tell. I mean, he gets aggressive, and he likes to just have that thing he doesn't like to, but it skates around on him. Yep. No, you're exactly right. You can see he might have used a back marker to his advantage. Corey was maybe a little bit balked up there, and, and it allowed Escalante to get a tiny run on him. So when Corey had to go even tighter and then moved over to the left ever so slightly, Escalante just kind of straight-lined it and was able to get past him. Three to go for this guy going down through the carousel right now. And his lead is two and a half seconds over to B's. Just been clicking off these low 38, 38 flats, 38 ones to get ready to go around Caroline Olsen on the 43 machine out of Norway. So Olsen's still working her way back from injury earlier on in the season. She's uh, had some score point scoring positions. Right now circulating just outside the top 15. We pay back to 15th. In 16th spot is the number 43. So JD gets around Caroline. And there is your championship points leader. Monster Energy, Yamaha Extended Services, Graves Yamahas. J.D. Beach, and what's going to happen with J.D. Beach next year is the big question. No contract for him. Does he want to go to Superbike? J.D., of course, is a, a world champion in the MotoGP Red Bull Rookies Cup from years and years ago when he was about 16 years old. And a championship in super sport in years past, but he also has quite a bit of Superbike experience. It'd be under great his belt. to see J.D. on a Superbike. It's time. He's been on a 600 for such a long time. And there's guys that are there. There's probably about three or four guys that you and I have talked about in our paddock that would be, be obvious choices to maybe you know step up. I wouldn't even mind seeing this kid I'd right love here to see this guy. I was just on a ready great superbike. I mean, Hayden Gillum deserves it as well. We've talked about him kind of being a big guy. I think that if he gets with, he's with a great team right now. I mean, if he gets, he's got some knowledgeable people down there, uh, really knowledgeable people in that ridiculous racing team. Um, but I think that if they were to put a super bike together, this would be this kid would be an obvious choice for me as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, JD has been almost started on a super bike ten years ago or whatever it was when he <laughs> rode much. for Richard, and uh, he's been on the 600 and he's been able to make a good living being on a 600. But if there's no opportunities really for him other than to go to super bike, he would be an obvious choice for me to fill Roger's seat. Could he all of a sudden go from this Yamaha program he's been with for years? The factory Yoshimura Suzuki bike, time will tell. And from what we're hearing from Suzuki, they're hoping to have that seat filled and wrapped up for 2019 by the time we get to our next race in two weeks. Wow, so there's going to be some movement. And then that'll start hope, a little yeah. chain reaction. You've got some teams um, that have been able to, here you go, Bryce Prince. Um, Looking back now, and as you can see, Escalante's coming. Ripping. So Bryce, what he's really got to do is keep his head forward. It would be neat to see him, you know, be fourth here today. He's ridden far too well. He made one little mistake at the beginning of that, and you can see here's J.D. Beach going across the line, 38-2, 38-1 flat, 38 one for the guys behind him. The pace really hasn't slowed down much. These guys were in the 37s, much like last year. Yeah, I mean, J.D. Beach, we're talking... You know, 37.4 for Valentin to be his fastest lap of the race, and he just went less than six tenths of a second slower than that at a 38 flat here with one lap to go. The white flag is flying, so this is it for JD Beach as he has about half this racetrack to negotiate. Beach didn't have it handed to him in this one. He definitely had to race for it, but when the time came, when push came to shove, he made the move on Hayden Gillum, put his head down, and set sail. He just always looks in control. Now, you know, really, when you sit there, you think, okay, what's he racing for? He's got an 82-point lead. He's racing to let everybody realize that, hey, I want that spot. I want, if, if there's an open super bike available, I'm the guy I want you guys to pick. I want, I'm the guy that, that wants to move up. So, you know, that, he, he's, he's putting it to him today. It always it, looks in control. Always looks in control. And his crew chief, John Ethel, and I were talking about, you know, J.D. Beach, and he said J.D. is one of the few guys that could have got him out of retirement. John Ethel runs a very successful shop. 
uh, up there, you know, just uh, north of Los Angeles. And the work ethic that JD puts into, he said, John said, if I'm coming out of retirement and I'm getting away from my shop, getting away from my family, I want to know that the person that I'm working with gives 100%, 100% of the time. And that effort is paying off for J.D. Beach as he is going to notch his fifth race win in a row. His eighth of the season comes across the line and will take victory here in Sonoma Supersport race number one. Mountain to Bees in second spot. Two and a half seconds behind. Then Hayden Gillum will round out the podium. There's a good look at John Ethel right there in the middle. Here's that battle for fourth spot as Escalante has getting really, really close to Bryce Prince. But here is the ever dangerous turn number 11 as Prince gets it slowed down, turned, and he will hold on to four spot. And Escalante with a huge effort after making a mistake that we saw. Not yeah. sure how many mistakes he was able to make. Yep. But Richie Escalante, by the way, set the fastest lap of his race on the last lap yeah, of 38.7. Green all the way across. So Escalante, you know, he's, he's funny because he does that. He, he he does put in some good times and that kind of thing and, and uh, at the end of his race. So really fast for him there. We're still waiting for 9th through 15th to come across the line. But Jason Aguilar will be just behind Nick McFadden. Wyatt Ferris is able to hold on to ninth spot. And Ashton Yates, after a big effort in the... Mali Junior Cup class, able to finish in 10th spot. Michael Gilbert in 11th. Miles Thornton would be 14th, just behind J.C. Camacho. Those guys fought to the line. I just watched Camacho go underneath Miles in turn 10, and that's a big move. <laughs> the riders still coming across the line, and Lucas Silva, who's in 15th spot. The last person not to get lapped, so J.D. Beach able to lap up to 15th position on this racetrack. So there's Hayden Gillum. They're going to have some work to do tonight, no question about it. Uh, he came across the line. When he came across the line, his, his head went dropped down, and you can tell he just stoke level low <laughs> for him. He, Hayden wants to win. I mean, he, he really does, and you're going to see a guy who's probably not going to be happy when Hannah, gets, Hannah has to interview him. He'll be putting on a brave face, but I know he wants to win. He got to ride that factory Indian for a couple rounds oh, yeah, sure uh, this did. last week. Mm -hmm. uh, and he told me that was a, a different experience for him. And the bike was a lot different than anything he'd ever ridden or been used to. So, uh, you know, and he, but he had a good time with it. Still holding on to the man with the van and the plan, Brand, as he was in Sturgis. Yep, that's exactly right. Black Hills race for that one. All right, Valentin de Bees in his own right, heading back and forth, you know, between uh, here in the U.S. and France and getting a lot of opportunity to ride on the track and test tires. And Really, I mean, it, you know, listen, it, it's wearing on him as I've talked to him about it, but uh, it's working for him, no doubt about it. Yep. There's Keith McCarty, head of uh, uh, racing like for it. Yamaha, having a conversation with Hayden Gillum. We'll take a break on being Sports. We'll come back with our interviews from the Super Sport Race. Welcome back to Sonoma Raceway here in Sonoma, California, as we're hanging out at the Cycle Gear Championship of Sonoma. It's round seven. And we just saw Super Sport race number one for the weekend where J.D. Beach put on a dominating performance. Kind of. I mean, it really was really more like the second half of the race where J.D. really put his head down. When it's all said and done, 2.4 seconds, the margin of victory for J.D. over Valentin DeBees, and then DeBees was able to extend his distance over Hayden Gillum to three seconds. So let's get down to Hannah, who's down there working to talk to these guys. Hannah? I've got our third place finisher, Hayden Gillum. Hayden, you led a few laps there. You were able to hang on to JD for the majority of that race, maybe made a couple of mistakes out there. What was going on? Yeah, uh, all weekend long, the last couple corners have been killing me, and, and I could really tell whenever I was riding behind them. I was trying to do what they were doing, but I don't know. I just can't right now. So. We got a lot of work to do overnight. I was I was feeling really good at the beginning of the race, and then lost a little feel with the front end about midway. And uh, those boys made me made me work hard, and hopefully I didn't give it to them too easy. All right, Hayden, thank you so much. Congratulations. 
All right, so working on the front end is going to be the task tonight, no question about it. Well, he's definitely running the, he's definitely riding the front end very hard. That's why you can see so much entry speed into the carousel and carrying that speed all the way through. So you can see that, and he'll go back and he'll talk to the guys at Ridiculous, and they'll sort it out for him and hopefully come back with something a little better tomorrow. So waiting for podium celebrations post-race of Super Sport. And, of course, we have Hannah, who has Valentin to bees. Valentin. You were doing a really great job to stay on the back of Hayden and JD there, and you actually were able to catch up to Hayden and overtake him. Tell us how you did it. Yes, um, being of the race, uh, I was thinking I would be a little bit better, but I struggled. Uh, I think it was more me than the bike, and um, but I worked really hard during during the free practice and Q practice to be able to to be fast at the end of the race, and we saw that at the end I saw. Uh, GD and um, and Gidi making uh, mistake. So when I saw that, I took my chance overtake uh, Aiden, but he overtake me back and then overtake him, and so we kind of lost like uh, more than a second. So you know, after that, uh, I went over a lapper, so I, I lost a little bit more time, and and at the end, I was able to get back on GD. So my pace was uh, really good at the end, and um, but not not enough. So uh, tomorrow we have to make some more work. And, uh, and see how it goes. But overall, I'm happy because uh, my body feels really great instead of last year at the end of the race. And, uh, and my bike too. So it's an improvement. And we will keep going and see how it goes tomorrow. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Valentin. Very physically demanding racetrack, Jason. Important that after race number one, your body's feeling much better. See all that information that he just gathered right there. And as far as he was setting his bike up to be fast at the end of the race, he's calculating some back markers, his battle with Gillum. He's going to put all that into something tonight, try to come up with something a little bit better tomorrow. But real honest assessment of what Valentin felt like he saw out there. It's great to see. Well, for our first place finisher, J.D. Beach, his eighth win of the season fifth in a row Hannah's with him right now JD five in a row for you Hayden was putting a lot of pressure on you during this race which we haven't seen a whole lot of up until this weekend how were you able to retake the lead and come out on top yeah, well, first off, I mean, Hayden's riding damn good. I mean, he, he was pushing me hard, and uh, I think he forgot he's not in Sturgis anymore because uh, the, earlier this week he was racing dirt track, and he was throwing some dirt, some dirt track passes. But, no, it, it, it was a lot of fun, and, uh, I mean, I, I definitely lear uh, learned a lot when he got in front of me and uh, just try, tried to kind of watch him a little bit. And he, I mean, he got a little bit of a gap on me, but my uh, Yamaha set in service Monster Energy gra uh, Graves bike was working fantastic and uh, was able to learn a little bit and kind of get the gap back to him and uh, got around him. I, I think uh, going into turn seven, maybe I, I, I don't remember now, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, we just tried to work really hard. And man, I just got to thank Ken uh, Hill and all the ridiculous guys for all the, tra the track days and uh, Dunlop tires for, uh, wor for working so hard this weekend. I mean, uh, this track is a tricky one and it's slick and they and they've done an amazing job but uh, we definitely have some ho some homework to do because uh, race one's gonna be hard I can tell you that thanks GD congratulations yeah race two is what he meant I it's think gonna so, be really yeah. hard and he's right so <laughs> yep. he's gonna go ha go back to work because he knows Valentin and Aiden Gillum are gonna do the same thing that's exactly right not gonna rest on his laurels and I think that you know you saw a lot of frustration in Hayden he's gonna hopefully come back with something tomorrow I love watching Sunday morning warm-ups because then you can really see if the changes that the team has made overnight made a difference. Here's your results for race number one. As you can see, 2.4 seconds the margin of victory there to be Gillum. Bryce Prince, Escalante, Corey West going to have to do some homework as well. McFadden has got to go to work too. Time's running out for his podium this year. Aguilar and Wyatt Ferris. All right. We'll take a break. When we come back, more of our continuing coverage from Sonoma Raceway. If you like, you know, passing and repassing and passing again, the first half of this Super Sport race was absolutely fantastic. So let's take a look at the moment of the race in Super Sport, Jason Pridmore. Here you go, and he was talking earlier about Hayden Gillum just coming and doing some dirt track. And this is a pretty good little move in and of itself here by JD Beach as well. He kind of snuck up underneath Hayden, and that was really the move of the race. Once he got by, he put his head down, put in some really fast lap times, and then 
with the other two guys kind of going after each other, it was able to open up that gap. All right, we'll take a commercial break. We'll continue our coverage as we still have Motul Superbike class looming up ahead. You don't want to go anywhere as we continue to bring all this great action from Sonoma Raceway in California.